I'm Laurie Thomas with the University of Kentucky Forestry and Natural Resources Extension, and I'm here with the tree of the week, the Eastern Hemlock. Eastern Hemlock, Tsuga canadensis, is an eastern conifer of cooler climates. It's also called Canada Hemlock or Hemlock Spruce. There are four Tsuga species in North America, two in the east and two in the west. Eastern hemlock is a slow-growing, long-lived tree that may take 250 to 300 years to reach maturity and live as long as 800 years. It is considered a medium to large-sized tree that in mature stands typically grows 2 to 3 feet in diameter and up to 100 feet tall. Eastern hemlock is one of the most shade-tolerant trees in our forest. It can survive in as little as 5% shade. It is a graceful looking tree when young with a pyramidal shape and open grown trees will retain branches that often touch the ground. It is valued as an ornamental landscape tree and as a wildlife tree since many species of wildlife benefit from the excellent habitat that a dense stand of hemlock provides. Eastern hemlock's native range includes the southern border of Canada to Nova Scotia into New England into the mid-Atlantic and lake states and south into the Appalachian Mountains in northern Georgia and west into Indiana and western Kentucky with small pockets. In our state it is found mostly in the east. Eastern hemlock grows on a variety of soils that are moist and well drained. It is typically found in cool coves and ravines but can also be found on rock outcrops of north facing slopes. Hemlock is susceptible to drought and windfall due to its shallow root system. Eastern hemlock is an evergreen conifer. The leaf is a flat needle that is single on the stem. It's not in groups or in bundles like we see with some of our other conifers. The needles are mostly two-ranked. That means the needles are on opposite side of the twig and separated by about 180 degrees. And so that branch will kind of lay flat. The needles are typically about a half an inch long and taper to a dull point. They are shiny dark green on top and have two white lines of white stomata on the underside of the leaf. The stomata are the minute pores in the surface of the leaf or the needle. The needles usually persist for about three years on a tree. Eastern hemlock is monoecious, meaning a tree has both male and female flowers or reproductive structures. The reproductive structures are in separate clusters on the same branch in hemlock. The male reproductive structures or conelets are yellow, small and round, and in the axis of the needles from last year's growth. The female conelet is light green and forms at the end of the branch. The pollen is wind dispersed in the spring between April and June. And trees begin flowering by about 20 years of age and may flower up to 450 years old. Eastern hemlock fruit is an ovoid or egg-shaped light brown cone. It is usually three-fourths inches long with rounded entire scales. The cones change from yellowish green to purple brown when they mature. When they mature in the fall around mid-October, they are deep brown and the scales open to release the seed. The cones close in wet weather and open again when it's dry. This prolongs seed dispersal. Eastern hemlock has very small seeds and they are dispersed by wind, but usually fall within the tree's canopy range because their wings are very small. Seeds germinate the following spring. An eastern hemlock begins um, producing cones around 20 years of age and will continue cone production up to 450 years. It is a good seed producer with cone crops over 60% of the years. It is considered the most frequent cone producer among eastern conifers. Typically, eastern hemlock produces cones every year with large crops every three to four years. Cones will persist through the winter, and eastern hemlock does not sprout, and, on, and only rarely will it layer. The bark of eastern hemlock is brownish on young trees and begins to become scaly as the tree grows and ages. On older trees, the bark is more of a reddish brown with wide ridges and furrows. And when the surface of the bark is freshly cut, you can see purple, dark purple streaks within that bark. The heartwood of eastern hemlock is light reddish brown and the sapwood can tend to be slightly lighter in color, but usually it isn't distinguished from the heartwood. The tree has noticeable growth rings, which can create an interesting grain pattern when the wood is flat or plain sawn. This is the most common method of cutting wood into boards. This method has minimal waste and also showcases a cathedral look of the annual rings. It is rated as non-durable regarding decay resistance. Eastern hemlock is one of the two primary commercial species of hemlock harvested in North America. The other is western hemlock, Tsuga heterophilia. 
Eastern hemlock is an important wildlife tree. Numerous animals browse the foliage, including white-tailed deer, moose, snowshoe hare, and eastern cottontail. Mice, voles, and birds consume the seed, and porcupines nigh on the bark. Dense stands also provide cover for wildlife. Cove forests in the Appalachian Mountains provide nesting sites for many birds, including a variety of migratory warblers. The large hollow trees also provide denning sites for black bear. Eastern hemlock wood is used primarily as construction timber for light framing, roofing, subflooring, boxes, crates, and pulpwood. It is also widely used as an ornamental tree for landscaping. The graceful tree is handsome throughout the year with a much softer form than most of our other conifers. It responds well to pruning and shearing and is often used as a hedge. Currently, there are more than 50 different cultivars of eastern hemlock. Eastern hemlock is under attack by the hemlock woolly adelgid, which is a small sucking insect like an aphid that threatens the health and survival of eastern hemlock trees. The adelgid was introduced from Asia in the 1950s and has spread throughout much of the hemlock's range, including Kentucky. The adelgid attaches to the bark at the base of the needles and sucks the sugars from the trees. Their feeding causes needles to dry up, turn a grayish color, and fall off, die and fall off. In addition, because the adelgid kills the apical bud, it prevents the tree from producing new growth and heavy infestations can kill a tree within four to ten years. The last national champion eastern hemlock listed was in 2013. Currently there is no champion listed. In 2013 that national champion was in Macon, North Carolina in the Great Smoky Mountains. It was 192 inches in circumference and 159 feet tall. The Kentucky champion eastern hemlock is in Letcher County and it's 149 inches in circumference, 135 feet tall, with the 50 foot, 53 foot crown spread. If you'd like to know more about champion trees, check out American Forest Champion Trees, or check out the Kentucky Division of Forestry Champion Trees. Now for a few fun facts about Eastern Hemlock. Eastern Hemlock is the state tree of Pennsylvania. From the 1880s to the 1930s, Eastern Hemlock was extensively harvested for its bark, which, which was used in the leather tanning industry. Tragically, only the lower bark was peeled off, leaving the standing tree to slowly die. Although this tree is often confused with the hemlock that Socrates drank, which was poison hemlock, Conium maculatum, Eastern Hemlock is not poisonous. Its needles have been used to make a tea that's high in vitamin C. One of the largest eastern hemlocks recorded had a circumference of 238 inches and was 175 feet tall. The scientific genus name Tsuga is the Latinized form of the Japanese common name of hemlock, and the species name Canadensis means from Canada. Thank you for joining me to learn about the eastern hemlock. I hope you get the opportunity to get out into your woodland, local park, or neighborhood and enjoy the eastern hemlock.